Hello! Welcome to Inky Art School. This video was a live class I held on Facebook as part of my free 10-day Inky Art School course. You can watch all 10 videos and get the free downloads I mention at www.johannabasford.com forward slash Inky Art School. I'll pop a link below. And if you like this class, be sure to check out my book, How to Draw Inky Wonderlands. It's jam-packed with easy-to-follow, step-by-step tutorials, creative project ideas, and of course, it wouldn't be an inky adventure without some pages to colour. Thanks for watching, and have fun! Hello everybody! Just checking we're all online. Give me a little second. Thank you so much for joining us joining me for the second day of Inky Art School. Um, yesterday was our day one. If you didn't manage to catch that video, scroll back through the great page and you can rewatch any time. So a few quick housekeeping notes. Every live video will be posted on the page as soon as the live class is over. It sometimes takes a couple of minutes for it to filter through onto Facebook. So if you miss the class, don't worry if you miss the start, don't worry. Equally, if I'm drawing too fast for you, which I'm sorry, I realise I do, um, it's muscle memory. <laughs> but if you watch on the rewatch, on the replay, you can pause, rewind, go at your own pace. There is absolutely no need to rush through this, guys. Rewatch it, take as much time as you need. If you are struggling with one section, pause, go over again and again and again. I haven't quite uh, got the height of my chair worked out here. I'm going to bring my stool in from the other studio. Um, so that was a quick note about that. It has been super exciting over the last 12 hours or so, 24 hours, to see all your inky illustrations start to be posted live. I am just delighted to see them all. I'm just going to check that I can uh, see your comments. Two seconds. Can you all hear me? I'm seeing thumbs up, so I suppose you can hear me. Sometimes I see your comments, sometimes I don't. Loads of thumbs up, that's fine. We have we have sound. Um, it's been super amazing to see your drawings. Thank you so much to everyone who has picked up a pen or pencil and given it a go. You guys are brilliant. I mean, like it really takes uh, courage and guts to try a new skill, especially something like drawing, which, you know, is a creative pursuit and there's like an aspect of... Um, not assessment at the end of it, but you're gonna look back on what you've done. It's not like when you go for a walk and you either went for the walk or you didn't. You know, you've done a drawing and now you're gonna look and think, well, did I like it or not? So well done, everyone. There have been some amazing ones. And I set up a new stream on the Facebook group, a new post called Gallery. So please upload your pictures onto there. I love to see them. Here are a few of my favorites from yesterday. Now, if I was some tech genius, I would now um, switch the computer and show you them on the screen, but I've had to print them out because I don't really know how to do that. So I think this is the best way for me to show you them. This one here is by Anna. I loved Anna's tracing. So look, she has used her tracing paper for this and has gone over her lines on tracing paper, which you have to leave a little while to dry, but it's super, um, super nice drawing on tracing paper and ink, really smooth, which I quite like. This one here is by Catherine. Oh, it's Catherine, I can't quite zoom out properly, but it's beautiful. I love, look at Catherine's line quality. That is so different to the way that I draw. So even though it's a, it's artwork that I draw, like actual formal illustrations and shapes, it doesn't look like one of mine. Well done, Catherine. I like that. And lastly, we have, let's get this out of the way. You know what's in art school day two. This one is Chelsea's. Our little flowers up there. Look how cute her little twinkly bits and little stars are. So pretty. Well done, Chelsea. And she's done the little spherical, circular motif. Good stuff, Chelsea. Loved it. Loved it. Hi, good. Back to me. So thank you, everyone. Um, upload them again. 
tonight for tomorrow and I'll pick another three um, to show off. But I just I just love seeing them. It's the best thing. I was posting some of them on my Instagram today as well. Thank you so much. So today's quick chat topic is all about the things that make you scared to draw. And a lot of people told me that they are scared of a blank sheet of paper. Good news, this is like a totally viable fear. Bad news is I get it too. Um, and I think if someone who draws for a living still gets that fear, you know, it's probably not going to have a quick fix. The way to get around this, the fear of the blank sheet of paper, the blank canvas, is to have a few tricks up your sleeve. So first of all, if a big blank sheet of paper scares you and you don't know where to start drawing on it, I'm not being funny, just get a really small bit of paper and draw on that instead. A post-it note is the perfect size. I love the fact that they're square format. I love that you can stick them on the wall and see your progress day by day. So if you're doing a 10 day drawing challenge, draw a little flower on a post-it note, stick it on the wall and gradually you're going to see them get better. Small canvas, small amount of fear. Next top tip would be to, I'm reading them off my cheat sheet that I've written down here, uh, to add something to an existing drawing. So this is perfect for what we're going to do today. We're going to do a draw along where that is when I have started an illustration, put it in one of the books, so it could be a colouring book, it could be the drawing book, and you just add to it. So you never have to start with a blank sheet of paper. You've always got a little bit of something there to take that edge off. Third trick, and this is the one that I use personally all the time. Have an icebreaker, have like a sneaky mega move trick up your sleeve so that you can whip it out whenever you are scared. For example, a flower, a little four eight petaled flower is often the first thing that I'll draw. So little circle, four equal size petals neatly balanced out around the central circle. Just having something that you know you can have as your go-to thing to draw first means that you don't have to sit there wondering what am I going to draw first, what am I going to draw first. You're going to draw that flower, always draw that flower, go back to that flower, draw that flower, then add a leaf, then add a vine, then add some polka dots, then add another flower. It's just like a really clever a uh, first step. So that would be on my top tips if you are scared of a big sheet of black paper. I think the most important tip though is, uh, yeah, just use a smaller bit of paper. So simple, folks. So simple. Uh, right, let's get on with today's tutorial. So some of you will have the book, which is great. <gasps> I don't have my book. I've left it over there. That's so embarrassing. I'm going to have to go and get it. While I'm doing that, others of you, well, who don't have the book will have printed out your download that I shared with you yesterday. So this isn't the exact page. Oh, look, I fit better if I lean further back. Uh, this isn't the exact page that we're going to colour today. What I did was I made up a little border and you'll see how this can fit in. Um, but I just didn't want you guys to have to draw on a blank sheet of paper. So print this out. The link is on the Facebook group. Please don't share it here, there and everywhere. It's just for you guys for now. Right, I am going to switch the cameras and go and get my book because I was doing something else just before we start this. Hold on two seconds. So, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Hold on, folks. This is the page that we are going to draw today. It's from the first section, the garden section, and how to draw in Key Wonderlands. Let's get going. Been a lot of chat today. Now, I'm going to draw a bit slower than yesterday. We'll take it from there. Let me switch the cameras. I can't see any comments today, folks. I have no idea how Facebook works. Sometimes I see things, sometimes I don't. Today, obviously, Mr. Zuckerberg was like, no, you do not need to see your comments. So I can't zoom the camera out enough, but this is the little page that we're working on. And there are some little bits of foliage there already. So if you're drawing this on the template, the, the, the download sheet, it isn't going to be exactly the same as this, but you can just make it grow from the edge of the template, if that makes sense. So with a draw along, I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to draw some stuff and you can either copy it and I'll talk you through it or draw your own things. So I'm using my rotary clicky pencil 
and I think we'll have some bluebells here. So I draw the the stem first. We'll have one here and maybe one here. So with the draw-alongs, you can get some ideas for how you might want to tackle this specific page. You can do the exact same thing as me if you like, or you could just see what I do and think, oh, I'm going to use a little bit of that flower in one of my pictures, but I'm going to have it with that leaf. Those are like inky hybrids, and that is what I draw all the time. I just sort of pick different bits and pieces from different flowers and put them all together to make new combinations. I guess it's like um, a pick and mix. Get that in America? Everyone in the UK knows what I mean when I say pick and mix. Now these little flowers here, I think we'll add an extra one and let's draw like one like this but as if it's on its side. So there's the stem, there's a little line here and a semicircle. So just now that kind of looks like a very basic mushroom and what I'm going to do is add one little petal here and another little petal here and another one here. Right, I'm just going to let you guys catch up while I check we're working. Hmm. What is a watch party on Facebook? Maybe that is a, maybe that's the way to go in this. Who knows? Who knows? We're doing our best. Some, a lot of people were saying yesterday that they hadn't received any email notifications about the live video and that I hadn't emailed you to say that we were now going live. Um, I don't, I'm not going to. <laughs> be the, would be the basic answer to that. I, um, I don't think I need to send I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to send emails like that because your inboxes are busy enough as it is. And also, you know where I am. I'm going to be here every day at three o'clock, but you absolutely do not need to catch a live feed. And in some respects, it might be better if you don't watch the live feed because then you can watch it at your leisure. You can replay any little bits that you're stuck on. You can pause it. You can go make a cup of tea, which is always a bonus. Um, and I do apologise. I know it's at a bit of a funny time of day. I saw some people who were being naughty yesterday and drawing along while they were at work and being a bit sneaky. Uh, please don't get fired would be my first bit of advice. Uh, Although I would totally have your back, write you some sort of note, plead for your job, all those good things. I had to just pick a time of day when it was going to work best for, for me, to be honest, because so many of my audience, so much of my audience is not in the UK. And even if an evening session would have been better, I can't do these videos from home because the internet is not good enough. And I can't get back in the studio in the evening because of the small sleeping children. So here we are, three o'clock. It's the dream time. <laughs> now, that's a little bit of a sketch and a little bit of a space here. I'll think about that later. I'm going to draw a little caterpillar on this leaf here. So I'm going to draw a line like this. That's going to be our guideline. And then just in small circles, I tend to get bigger towards that middly bit, get them smaller again, and then like a larger one for his head. A couple of little antennae. There he is. Now, how about a big flower up here? So if you're doing this on the download, let me just quickly pop this in here. Just draw these things coming up from here. So for example, you could have a big flower coming up from here. Sketch that in, a leaf. <laughs> this is really sketchy. Um, a couple more leaves here. You see what I mean? Just sort of build it up using this as your beginner line. So it's like you're peeking through this pretty little frame, but you don't have to just draw on a white sheet of paper and have your artwork floating about, which I know can be a bit 
weird. I don't like drawing like that either. So in this one, we've got our big flower. I think uh, we'll make this one another little daisy, I think. So again, with the daisies, straight line there, little half moon. So it's like a little cap. And then add the petals. So as we get to the edge ones, I sort of almost draw a straight line and then just curl it under like that. And these ones are more rounded. I'll do some leaves. So let me show you a couple of quick ideas for leaves. You could, when you're inking them, draw the middle vein all the way up and do little lines like this. You could draw the middle line all the way up and do little lines like that. Or you could draw this up here and you could do, I guess, lines together, but leave a gap lines together, leave a gap. I quite like that. I do that quite a bit. Okay, there's our little leaves. What next? How about we do some things up at the top? So up here, let's draw a few little leaves just poking in from the frame. central vein and with these ones this line isn't straight so if that line was straight it would look like this but it's not we're doing it sort of what's that word scalloped I guess inwards like that and this one here I'll do the same Okay, and now let's do a little vine just creeping in from here. So with vines and things, I would always draw the line first in completion and then add the leaves. Don't draw, try and draw like a, vine, a little bit of vine, leaf, vine, leaf, blah, 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 blah. I think it's easier if you plot out the whole of the, the sort of tendril bit. Now we'll do a little stalk coming down from here. I'm gonna do a little three point leaf. So it starts off like a normal leaf, just like that. And then on each side, I add a baby leaf. So I'll show you again, a little stem, teardrop leaf, like that. Then on this side, a bit like that. I guess this is like a 1960s hairstyle and then join that up. And then once again, 1960s hairstyle, join it up. I'm gonna make that into a little tendril bit. Okay, I'm gonna do a big leaf. So for example, here, we can do a leaf on the vine. I just draw over where that vine is because we can tidy that all up when we ink. And maybe a few little baby leaves here. What's that? Must have been, did I draw that? Must have been an example I was doing. Completely forgot, completely forgot. Okay, and then here, Let's have a little magical lantern. So this is actually something that's in the book in the forest section, but we'll just pop it in here because I love a lantern. So I like to have mine hanging from like a vine like this. We draw the handle first. It's a bit, it's a bit low, make it a bit shorter. So a little rectangle. And then I'm gonna draw a piece like that and a piece like that. And then a circle. There's a step-by-step -step tutorial in the book. 
um, showing you how to do sort of magical objects like secret keys, lanterns, uh, I think there's a compass in there. What else, folks? Stars, maybe, messages and bottles, those kind of things. They're all in the book. There we go. And then I'm going to do some little, we'll do some little fireflies around there later. So that is our little magical lantern. I'm really conscious of time. We'll do a little bit more. Let's do, let's do a little bumblebee over here. So bumblebees are one of my favourite things to Oh, I know what I want to do. We're going to do some hanging harebells. So long stem down. We'll do three. I always think three looks pretty. Like if you're wondering how many of a thing to do, always go odd number. I learned that listening to a podcast from a florist. And she said, if you're doing an arrangement, use odd numbers for the big blooms. If you do evens, it can look a bit odd. Apparently, odd numbers are just more aesthetically pleasing. So do three or five or something. Don't do two or four. And I figured a florist would know what they're talking about when it came to placing blooms. So I took that advice to heart. Let's do a few teeny tiny leaves here. And... Will we still do our bumblebee? Yeah, why not? Dude, it's so busy outside today. Sorry, folks. So a bumblebee is just going to start off with a little circle. I'm going to add a head. It's important that his bottom, or her bottom, his bottom is white. So when you're shading it, this will be black. Um, some leaves, some leaves, some wings. Now I said in the book, I always worried that my birds didn't look like they would fly. They were just a bit too chubby, didn't look very realistic. I'm well aware that my bumblebee is not very realistic, but there we go. Okay, so that's our little um sketch. I'm just going to let you guys have a quick peek at that. And then we're going to ink it. Now, obviously, we're going to ink straight into the book. If you're working on the download, you would uh, work, uh, sorry, ink onto the download page. I'm going to use a 0 0.3 or 2 Statler. We'll see how we go. Also, just while I remember, if while you're drawing, you get a smudgy hand down here, I do all the time. It's just the graphite from when you're moving your pencil. It's a good idea to have a wet cloth nearby or some baby wipes and just give it a, a clean before you start inking. Otherwise, you're just going to smudge it all when you start drawing. Back to the ink. So here we go. If you are left handed, start at the right and work left. And if you are right handed, start on the left. No, if you're right handed, start on the left and work right and do the opposite if you're left handed. Oh my goodness. Right, here we go. Oh, this is a very old 0 0.3. <laughs> I'll persevere. I can't, it's just too rubbish. I've used that pen so much that the nib has a. The nib's gone. This is a 0 0.2, but it's instantly better. There we go. So maybe that's a good point to make, actually. If you are using an art material and it's just not working for you and it's actively annoying you, I just say switch it out. Don't persevere. I think if you're not enjoying the experience, why continue it? So I used to try and use... I think it was a 0 0.2 pencil lead because it was just finer and softer when I was using my rotary pencil. And literally every time I felt like I put the 
pencil to paper, it would snap, like literally snap, snap, snap. It was just so brittle. And I don't even draw with a heavy pressure, so I don't know who those pencils are designed for, but it was not going to work for me. So I don't use those anymore. Life is too short for a snappy pencil. I'm going to do this one a bit different. You could sketch these little bits in pencil before you ink if you wanted to get your sort of um, little borders perfect. I quite like them wobbly so I don't mind so much. And I'm going to do, this is quite a nice little trick, so if you have a fine pen you can do lots of little close together lines like this all going in the same direction. Do that again here. Here's a nice trick, leave a gap, keep going again. In this gap, just do a little line of dots. I think that looks really sweet. I don't know if that's got a proper name, but... I mean, it's definitely not cross-hatching. You'll often see that in my commercial illustration work. It's a bit too fine to do in a colouring book. I'm not really sure what you guys would would do with that in a colouring book. Okay. So here, where this leaf has gone over the top of that one, I'm just going to darken that in. Okay, now let's do our vine. For this leaf, I'm just going to go around the outside edge. I'm not going to ink those two little lines there. But I am going to do that for some detailing. Now, remember when you get to your lantern, not to do the vine all the way around. Stop when you get to where the little handle bit is and then draw the handle because remember the vine is going through the handle so you won't see it all the way round. And then our little leaves. I always draw the stem but first and then the leaf. Oh, just kicked, just kicked a light. Sorry about that couple little dots. And then we finish off our lantern. Somebody asked a question yesterday about if it was okay to rotate their book or their paper while they're drawing. Absolutely, I do that all the time. The only reason I don't do it as much when I'm doing tutorials, you just saw me do it there, is it sometimes is really annoying for the camera angle. But normally yeah, and also normally my head would be about here, <laughs> like I have my head really, really close to the paper when I'm drawing. Not because I can't see it, I just feel like if I'm drawing a small thing I'm always peering closer, but because I've got the camera and the lights in the way I'm a little bit further back today. I'm gonna just do an extra little line here to give the impression of this having glass I guess. Okay, I hope this has given you some ideas for how you could tackle this page. Obviously, we're not going to do the full double page spread in one sitting. We're only going to do a few little bits and pieces. But the idea is that you would get some inspiration for how you would tackle the page or actually any of the sort of gardeny pages in the book. Also, there are lots of pages in Secret Garden, Enchanted Forest and World of Flowers where there are gaps for you to draw. And now, my friends, you have some tricks and tips that you can use for drawing in those pages of the book. No more will you have to say, I don't really know what to do, I just like to colour, I'm not really sure how to to tackle those pages, here we go, here are some ideas and I know you can do it. Now, here's a couple of leaves. I think we'll do a little bit of detailing just at the top here. 
and do that. So if you want, you could do the middle one first and then that acts as a guide and you just have to fill the two side ones in. It's probably a little bit easier. Now we're going to do the other bit of the vine here. I'm amazed how many people are watching this live. <laughs> Are you people all meant to be at work or have you ditched the school run? The mind the mind boggles. I had some people saying they'd set their alarm for like 1am in some far flung country. So thank you so much for tuning in. But you can honestly watch it on catch up. Please don't lose sleep over this. There we go. And remember, with these little leaves, we just do the edges. And I'm going to do a bit of detail here. It's quite hard to see the detailing when you've still got the pencil lines underneath. So sometimes I just do a wee bit of with the pencil lines and then I'll erase the pencil lines and finish off any detailing. We'll do our little hair bells next. I'm going to do all these curly bits. Oh, these look like little ballerinas, don't they? Look, there's the body. There's the little skirt. And here's their little feet. My gran used to grow fuchsias that look like little ballerinas. I'm sure you know the ones that I mean. There we go. Now, let's draw these stems. I'm going to draw them a bit wiggly. Embrace the wobble, as I said in a comment to somebody. Don't worry if your lines aren't straight. They're not meant to be. We're humans, not computers. There we go. And I think for this we'll do a few lines coming down from the top. That makes them look even more like little dancers, doesn't it? <laughs> and then I like the little line up from each of the points of those scallops. I think it just makes the petals look really delicate. All right, next up we're going to ink the cow parsley. How are we doing for time? It's half past. We'll finish this and then we'll nip on. I've got something really exciting to show you for tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to ink the wee cow parsley flowers first and then join them up. Probably do these ones as well. Move that along a little bit. Draw these onto here. One, two, three, four, five. And you don't need to add an inky detail to everything. So, for example, these what these whittle <laughs> these little leaves I'm just gonna do like that I'm not gonna add anything else to them with this daisy I'm gonna make that line there it was kind of like not smooth a little bit jiggly jaggedy and then petal 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 let's add some little dots in here makes it look like the actual center of the daisy I might do that in here as well to keep us all even Stevens. Here is our little caterpillar. So cute. Now you can add a little face to him if you want. I find that that is so small that if I start trying to add eyes and a mouth and make him look smiley, it just gets a little bit too blobby in there. So he's going to be a faceless caterpillar. Don't worry, I'm sure he's really happy. Um, but you could add a face if he was a bit bigger. And then again, instead of a smooth line, just do a little wibbly wobbly line there. Add some polka dots. 
Now with this one, I'm going to draw this petal first and then I'm going to draw the ones on this side and then this side. And I don't always draw both lines of the petal. So for example, on these ones, I was just drawing the right hand side and the tip and then I just make it kind of poke underneath that one there. Let's do some wee lines coming down from here, some up from here. These are the little lines as if you're plucking your eyebrows. Heart at the bottom, light at the top, a few dots. And we'll do a stem. There we go. Here's our leaves three ways. That's that one. It's quite simple. And this one here with the veins only on one side. And this one here, which is a bit like the ones that we did at the top, where we'll do close together, leave a gap close together, and they can add little polka dots there. You can also add some little stripey lines if you wanted, or just leave it. I, I get carried away. Sometimes it's hard to know when to stop. Uh, now, our bumblebee. So, for him, I'm going to ink the wings first because they are the topmost part of him. And then underneath, you will see his funny little body. So, these lines are all sort of wiggle these scrubby lines. I'm going to do this little stinger there. I don't know if a stinger is the right name for that. And then what we'll do for the wings. Let's do a triangle here and then a little line and some dots and a little line. So the reason we did the wings first was that we don't want to have to overdraw on his little body. And remember the black is here and here so that he has a white bottom and to make him look extra sort of fluffy you can just do a few little lines here and let's add his head little eyes I'm gonna I'm gonna shade this in black little antennae and then some dashy broken lines going that way and because he'll be buzzing about quite the thing We'll do some wee lines here to get the idea of movement on his wings. All right, so that is the inked picture. I would actually also wear this vein, vine, vine is coming out from underneath this leaf. Let's do a little bit of cross hatching here. So I'm just doing lines horizontally. And that makes that bit ever so slightly darker so that it looks like it's poking out from underneath that leaf. All right. So I'm just going to leave that ink to dry. I know what you're about to say. We went to see it again. I remember this comment from yesterday. Let me flip it back. So if you're trying to catch up that is this sort of little area that we've drawn minus the caterpillar who's at the bottom. I'll leave this sitting here so that you can see it for a little minute. Do not be in a rush to erase your pencil lines after inking in the book. Really important you give them a good long while just to settle in. Um, otherwise you're gonna smudge it and it'd be such a shame after all that beautiful work. Uh, somebody left a comment yesterday um, when I was mentioning about Q&As, they asked a question, what about a light box? So a light box is a perfect thing if you want to use the two layer paper method and not erase. So I work on that really thin layout paper. If you don't want to work on that, you could use normal paper and just use your light box. And after you've sketched in paper, go onto your light box. I'm going to flip this over now. Um, and the light box is essentially, I've got one through there but I should have brought through, it's like um, a sheet of glass with a light underneath it and you can put one drawing like this underneath it 
and then a new sheet of paper on top and the light shines through so that you can trace it. It's basically the fancy equivalent of holding a sheet of paper up to the light to see through it. And if you want to work on thicker paper that you aren't normally able to see through, a light box is perfect. So if you want to do, for example, somebody want to do watercolour flowers, I would use your light box um, to trace your illustrations onto your watercolour paper if you didn't want to do pencil ink, then erase. It's not a necessary piece of kit. In fact, when I first started out in illustration, I couldn't afford a light box. So I used to use my Pyrex lasagna dish, you know, like those big glass trays that you make a lasagna in. And I would lean on my knee onto that dish and put my lamp on the floor and I would uh, draw through it like that, which is great unless you've got like a really greasy bit of cheese still stuck on there and then your paper gets ruined. So a kind of top tip, also kind of a cautionary tale. Uh, I'm still going to leave that longer before we rub it out. While I've got you here, I'm going to speak about tomorrow's class. Oh, Java has an update. Computer updates always happen at the oddest of times. I'm also getting a phone call just now, apparently. Just ignore that. You're more important. Tomorrow, folks, we have a really sweet tutorial. We are going to be making a little illustration like this. So I'll show you close up as well. It's basically a little grid of 12. I did have to count there. Uh, yeah, four times three is 12. Uh, little wildflower stems. I think this is super sweet and it's so easy to do. Like it looks super tricky. Let me see if I can put it under here. Oh no, we're too, we're too close, we're too close. Uh, what you have to do in preparation is to grab a couple of downloads. So you can either, if you're working on layout paper, the thin paper that I use, download this sheet. I'll put this a, a link to this next. And this is gonna show us where to sketch the flowers. So all we'll be doing tomorrow, this actually is a back to sketch that I did. We'll be laying a sheet of paper over the top of it. And then where you see the gray, you probably can't see just now, maybe you'll see down here where you can see the grey boxes is where we draw the flowers. If, however, you're not using layout paper, two options. Number one, you can print out the download and use a scalpel and really carefully cut out those four 12 boxes. So you're essentially making like a stencil, I couldn't think of the word, a stencil. Or you can also make up your own template using squared paper like this. I am going to put you up a squared paper template, see like this. A squared paper download will go up onto the page tonight, uh, the group today. So you can download a sheet of squared paper, print it out, either make up your own like that, a uh, or just draw on some square paper at home if you don't have a printer. If you are using a scalpel, please be careful, people. Use a cutting mat, a metal ruler, and a sharp scalpel, and be careful. My preference, if I'm being completely honest, is that you um, don't, and that you do this method just because it involves less plates. Uh, please be careful, please be careful. So I'll put these templates up online this evening, print them all out, be ready for tomorrow. If you want to draw along, if you just want to take your time, please be my guest. There is absolutely no need to do it tomorrow. Uh, you can just watch the tutorial, have a lovely time, have a wee cup of tea, have no drawing materials around you, uh, and then tackle it yourself. Right, I think it's about time to try and erase this ink. Erase this ink, erase this pencil. I'm gonna just clean my eraser there. So, <laughs> softly, softly, catchy monkey as I think the phrase I was looking for yesterday that a few people helped me out with. So when I'm erasing, nice clean plastic white eraser, gentle sort of backwards and forward motion. It's better to have to take a couple of passes going over it than to scrub away like you are trying to get a spot off your bathroom tiles. You just really want to Think more about gently lifting the graphite off as opposed to scrubbing it off. One thing you don't want to do is to rip your paper 
and sometimes the graphite will smudge and you'll have a little heart attack like I just did just there and think that the ink has smudged. It was just the graphite folks, it was just the graphite. There you go. Now the good news is this paper in the book is colouring book paper. So once you have added all your little bits of artwork you can grab your colouring pencils and this becomes your own unique colouring book page. Nobody else in the world will have this page because you've drawn it yourself. And those black lines will just sort of blend in with the black lines of the colouring book. Look, here's the colouring book lines at the top here that were already printed, the drawing book, sorry. And here's the stuff that we added. There you go. I might try and, I might try and show you this back here. You see that? I kind of need like a best of both worlds camera. That one there is just a little bit too close for me to to show you that stuff close up. Okay, so that was our draw along today. I hope it was helpful. I hope there's some wee nuggets of ideas in there that you're going to try out on your own drawing books tonight. As ever, please show your work. I love to see all your drawing. Upload your pictures onto the gallery post on the Facebook group. Uh, and if you want to put them on um, Instagram, just tag me in it so that I can find them. I love to share them. I'm just having a little look through all my notes to see that I've covered everything I have. If you are faced with a blank sheet of paper and you are scared to draw, remember my three top tips. If it's a big sheet of paper, scrap that. Get a smaller sheet of paper. Why make life more scary than it need to be? Number two, don't draw from a blank sheet of paper. Add to something that's already there. Find a page like this. I can't work out lighting. A, a draw along, something where there's a bit of artwork already there. If you haven't got Secret Garden or you have, but you avoided all those pages where you had to finish off the drawings, dig that book out, folks. This is your moment and start adding in because you now have the skills. And last but not least, the mega move, have an icebreaker. It's the equivalent of going to a cocktail party or a dinner party and not really knowing anyone and being able to have a few key questions like, so um, where was the last place that you went on holiday? Brilliant, I use that one all the time. Get a good little chat, what's the most interesting book you've read recently? Those kind of things that you have in your back pocket that you can whip out when you need and bam, get you through the icebreaker moment. So draw a little four flower for a petal flower, a little leaf, a vine, a bumblebee, whatever it is that you need to stop that blank sheet of paper being blank. <sighs> I still can't see a single comment, not a single comment. For all that, I can see that people are watching. I can't read any of what you've been saying. I'm going to hop on later and uh, get cracking with that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll get your downloads ready for tomorrow and I'll see you back here tomorrow for day three of Inky Art School. Thank you so much and I'll see you tomorrow.